Hi guys, welcome to Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. If it's your first time here, then as always, it is good to see you and I hope you're gonna stick around. Okay, well, welcome to our weekend video. Those of you in the know, know that we normally upload two videos a week, normally upload on a Wednesday, midweek. Those videos will normally be gameplay related, reviewing some kit out in the field or just general gameplay. And then at the weekends, normally on a Saturday, like this video today, we'll normally do a studio video where we look at everything to do with Airsoft. Everything in between kit reviews, gear reviews, replica reviews, uh, tech, pretty much everything. <laughs> so this weekend, we'll get straight into the video. We're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm not looking particularly at a piece of kit. We have got a replica here on the table, but you know, that's, that's just for something to look at. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, what we're gonna look at today is, is possibly aimed at newer players, uh, more than you guys out there that are a bit more experienced. Um, but also I'm gonna look at some items that might apply to your Airsoft games. Let me know in the comments if I miss anything out here or if you disagree with my point of view. Um, but that's fine, you know, uh, that's what the comments are for and I will always respond to a comment. Might not get back to you straight away, but I will always respond. So, anything we bring up today, if you've got anything to add or if you have any comments on what I say, then feel free to drop that in the comments below and we can have a chat about that as well. So what I'm going to look at today is what to expect if you're a new player when you turn up at an airsoft field. Now, not necessarily... I know we've looked at bits of kit you want to take with you as a new player and stuff like that, but I want to emphasise some of the important aspects of what you need to take with you. And I also want to look at the, the attitude that you bring with you, if you like, to the airsoft field. Um, what to expect, what, what you want to get out of it, you know what I mean? Um, I hope that kind of makes sense as I go on. I'm not stepping on everybody's toes. I just want to give you my opinion on what Airsoft is to me, and then you get a better idea of, of me as a player uh, and how we play on. So first of all, I think what we'll look at is what to expect when you first turn up at an Airsoft field. Well, if you've never been to an Airsoft field before and you haven't got any gear whatsoever, if you're turning up as what we'd normally call rental, so you're renting all the gear that you're going to be using, the primary importance, I would say, to enjoy your first Airsoft game is to have good eye protection. And me personally, I always recommend face protection as well because nothing's going to put a damper on your view of Airsoft if your first game ever, you get your teeth shot out or a tooth cracked or you end up with a, a, a bleeding cut on your face. So for that reason, as a brand new player going to your first game, either ensure that you get good eye protection from the site you go to as part of your rental package or if you don't or if you prefer to have something that will work well for you then what I would say is is to get yourself one of these lower face meshes that will protect your teeth they're not very expensive I wear them all the time a lot of players do especially with the cushion sides like this they're very affordable they're not expensive at all I think you get them around about 12 13 British pounds similar in dollars for you guys over in the States and this will not only protect your teeth but it also protects your nose and the lower part of your face and it's well worth having one of those if you're not gonna have that as part of your rental package so that's worth bearing in mind now you don't have to spend a huge amount to get some safety eye pro eye pro monumentally important i can't stress enough how important your eye protection is because in our sport in our hobby the big thing that's a danger to us amongst other things but primarily is getting hit in the eye without eye protection by a bb that is going to put a real dampener on your experience verse off if it doesn't blind you it could kill you in extreme circumstances but if it doesn't blind you then it is going to give you a serious injury either way so it's well worth avoiding now i use these these are bolle tracker twos i've done a whole video on these Basically, what you're looking for with eye protection here in the UK, you want it to be kite marked and you want it to be certified as ballistic rated B or better. Uh, B is like your minimum, I would recommend anyway. Again, if anybody is more knowledgeable on that than me, then put a comment down below. We'll have a chat about it. But as far as I'm concerned, B should give you the impact protection as a bare minimum against BB strikes from 
hot snipers and the like. So a good pair of eye protection is essential and you don't have to pay a huge amount for safety glasses that are gonna protect you. The ball is a full seal, so the BBs can't get in as long as you wear the head strap that comes with them. Now, these you can get for around about 15 British pounds and you can get them at most DIY places. Um, you can get them online, certainly. You can also get them from Airsoft suppliers. But another thing as a new player, if you do get a pair of these that's going to ruin your day, is fogging. You'll often hear people on the communities talking about fogging and the various ways of stopping their eye protection fogging up. So if it fogs up, you can't see anything um, and it's just going to ruin your day in general. That happened to me my very first game. And then I discovered these, which are revision wipes. You can get those online from eBay or other suppliers and basically one wipe will last you a whole day's play because you keep it in this paggy and that keeps it fresh and you just wipe the glasses between games in the safe zone and they don't fog up. I've never had any fogging issues whatsoever since I started using these revision wipes and a lot of my friends at Airsoft and a lot of other players that I've had a chat to, they have also started using these and found them to be great. So that, as a new player, is of primary importance. You want decent eye protection. And that brings me on to the attitude on the field, as we were mentioning. When you go for your very first game, never, and I repeat, never remove your eye protection or your face protection in the non-safe zone or in the game zone, as they might refer to it at your particular site. Once you're out of the safe zone, your eye protection should be on at all times. And believe it or not, I have seen people remove their eye protection to give it a wipe in game. I can't stress again how dangerous that is to your eyesight and your health. Never remove your eye protection unless you are specifically told by an in-game marshal that it is safe to do so. Always keep your eye protection on at all times. So as a new player, that's well worth remembering guys. Do not remove your eye protection and make sure that the eye protection you have is good if it's not supplied by the the site that you're playing on for your rental package or alternatively if you decide to take your own eye protection we have encountered on my home site at Tasball Airsoft on occasion newer players bring in their own eye protection and when we've checked them they have not been suitable for Airsoft gameplay uh, either because the rated impact rating is too low or just because they're not going to work for the player, they're just going to fog. Uh, so get yourself a decent set of eye protection. That'll avoid you having any problems on the day that you turn up at Airsoft. Now, when you do get to your first game, if you are a rental package, pay heed to your marshals. On any decent Airsoft site, you will find that the marshals will be more than happy to help you. They'll guide you and direct you on how to use the replica that you're renting. They also guide you on the equipment that you're issued with, whatever that might be at your particular site. They'll give you an idea where things on the site are, where the safe zone is, the rules that you have to follow, and any safety advice that needs to be given. And with that in mind, when you do turn up, try to pay attention during the safety brief. If you've heard it before, which we all have, I've heard the safety brief hundreds and hundreds of times, but it's important for the people who haven't been before to keep quiet during the safety brief so they can hear it. There is important information there that will relate to your site, so it's well worth listening in. And I've seen it before, it's nothing more annoying than when you're trying to give a safety brief, such as the owner of our site could be giving a safety brief, and people are talking over that safety brief. It makes it very difficult and it disrupts the general flow of the day. <laughs> so do pay attention guys, even if you're an experienced player, listening to that safety brief, you might switch off a bit if you've heard it all before, but remember there would be players there that possibly haven't heard it before and it's important that they hear that brief. Now when you go for your first games play, you might find that the safety brief will include details of some of the site rules, such as blind firing. Most sites will not allow blind firing. And what they mean by that is you have to be able to see down the length of your replica's barrel in order to shoot at a target. In other words, you can't just lift it over a wall and shoot over the wall without being able to see what you're shooting at. That would be classed as blind firing. So be aware of that. 
regular rules are if you're using a sniper rifle for example a bolt action sniper rifle many many sites more sites here in the uk will have some form of minimum engagement distance and what they mean by that at my home site tasbo for example it's 30 meters so if anybody comes within that 30 meter distance you cannot shoot them with a bolt action sniper for safety reasons and obviously it's going to hurt quite a lot so basically Pay attention to the minimum engagement distances depending on what replica you're using. Now, if you're renting, the vast majority of rental sites are going to give you some sort of assault-based replica like this AR-15 we have sat in front of us here. And in those cases, your minimum engagement distance might only apply to full automatic. Now, what we mean by full automatic, if you're a new player, you'll probably have a good idea already, but the replica is currently on safe. We flick it up when we're on semi-auto, which means every time we pull the trigger, one shot will go off from that. And then if we go on to full auto, what that means is, as long as I hold that trigger down, it's going to keep firing BBs out the end. So it's just going to keep firing. That's full auto fire. Now, my home site has a minimum engagement distance for full auto of 10 meters. So 10 meters, if anybody comes within 10 meters, make sure that your selector switch is on semi-auto fire only. That way, you're not going to spray someone with a load of BBs at close range and cause them a, a huge amount of pain, <laughs> in some cases. So, those are the kind of distances we mean. Now, some sites might operate differently than that. They might have a, a minimum engagement distance for any kind of firing. And if you get within a certain distance, you have to use what they call the bang-bang rule. Now, I've never played at a site that uses the bang-bang rule. But what that basically means is you might have seen it in videos before. If somebody's too close to take a shot at, you just say bang and they're supposed to take the hit. Now, I think a lot of sites are slowly doing away with that. But let me know again in the comments if your particular site still uses the bang bang rule and how you find it works out for you. We tried it for a while, I think, up at Taz Bowl. It was a, it was a mix. Um, sometimes people would use it. But it, it's always been the rule at my home site that if, if you don't take the hit... Uh, you can shoot back, uh, there is no bang bang rule, so unless you get hit with a BB, you're still in play. So, you know, be careful with that, make sure you know if there is a bang bang rule or not, because if somebody bang bangs you and you don't take the hit, there's going to be arguments, and again, if you shoot someone too close and they know that's the rule, you're going to get some aggro from that as well. So these are all the things that it's worth paying attention to in that initial brief, and like I said earlier, if you have any queries about anything like that, then speak to your marshals, your on-site marshals. They will normally be more than happy to help. Now, the next thing is you're probably going to have to sign waivers. Uh, there's usually insurance documents that you have to sign and waivers on your very first visit. Um, so obviously, pay attention to those. Make sure you fill in any paperwork that is required by your particular site. That's going to make your day run more smoothly for you. Especially if you can get hold of that paperwork online or something like that in advance and have it filled in on the day so you can just hand it in when you get there. Another thing to look at is, is if you go for your first day and you really enjoy it and you want to buy your own replicas, then you officially here in the UK anyway, uh, might not apply to some of you guys in the States or other countries, uh, but here in the UK, we need to have some kind of defense to own a non two-tone replica. And by two-tone, that means that the replica has to have more than 50% of it covered in a bright color, such as bright blue or bright orange. You'll have seen two-tones knocking about. Now, anybody over the age of 18 in the UK can buy a two-tone replica. Just walk into a shop. If you're over 18, they will sell you a two-tone replica or online. However, to get something like this with what they class as military-style colors, you have to have some sort of defense. Now, your defense will be that you're an airsoft skirmisher, but obviously you can't just tell a retailer that. They may not accept that. You have to have some proof that you're a skirmisher. And the most common way of proving that you're an airsoft skirmisher is with what we call UCARA. It's not a license. It's just a database that holds the details, the postcode and name of all registered skirmishers in the UK that have registered with UCARA. And then also on that database is a, a list of retailers that subscribe to the UCARA system. And all that means is, is if you are UCARA registered, when you go to buy one of these realistic imitation firearms, as they call them, or a RIF, you would provide them with your UCARA number, 
They can check your postcode and name against the delivery details or against yourself and they know that you are registered as a player and you have a defense to buy a riff. So if you do want Ucara and you think that's going to be something worth registering for, most sites will operate within Ucara and they will be able to arrange that for you. However, you'll have to go to free games and it's usually free games and they can't be in less than two months. So the games have to be spread out for over two months of free games. I mean, you can go as many times as you want, but the free games is the minimum in not less than two months. And then the site will be able to register you on the Ucara database. Again, if you speak to the site owner or the marshals, they'll be able to get you the paperwork you need to start off getting your way to getting a realistic imitation firearm here in the UK. Now that's the next thing. Do you need to take your own replica with you for your very first game? No, you don't. If you want to get your own replica, wherever you may be in the world and whatever the rules may be, then absolutely do it. I took my own replica for my very first game. I still use it now. <laughs> it was two tone. It doesn't really matter. On any decent site, most of the guys and girls that you'll encounter in game will be really sound. They'll be really enthusiastic to welcome a new player to site because obviously our hobby and sport only survives by having new players and fresh blood and spreading, getting more and more players. So most of those guys will be happy to show you the replicas, show you around the gear, give you some advice on stuff they've used. And it's worth taking in that advice if you're a new player because some of the things you encounter, they might have already done before and they'll save you a bit of money. A bit of time and effort getting you exactly where you want to be. And the same goes for the marshals. So there you go. You can either take your own replica or you can rent. A lot of people will tell you to rent purely from the point of view that if you go for your first game and you don't like it, then you've spent money on a replica that you really didn't need to. But if you were going to get one anyway and you're adamant that you want to get one, don't let anybody put you off. If you want a replica, you go and buy a replica, go for your first game and try playing with your own replica for your first game. Get used to your own kit. So the choice is absolutely yours. Now the next bit of very important equipment that I can't stress enough as well is appropriate footwear. There's a pair of boots there because I play, as many of you know, mainly woodland. Now if you are playing outdoors or in woodland, I can't stress enough how important good footwear is. You want a good pair of ankle supporting boots because again, if you trip over a log or a tree root or slip down a muddy embankment and you don't have suitable footwear to provide the grip which causes you to slip in the first place or to protect your ankles, if you throw your ankle out on your first ever game, that's going to put you off as well because you're going to be sat out for the rest of the day in quite a bit of pain. So good quality footwear is well worth taking. So as a new player, that's basically all you need. If you're renting, good footwear and make sure you've got adequate eye protection and face protection unless the site provides what you will be comfortable in as part of your rental package. But footwear, they ain't going to supply that in the majority of cases. So do get a good pair of boots if you're outdoors. If you're indoors, see what other players use. Get on the communities, find out what they use. Might get away with trainers or something you can move faster in indoors. But I'd normally recommend a good pair of boots just for that ankle support protect your feet and your ankles and also if you're outdoors they stop you getting wet feet as well <laughs> especially in the winter so that's well worth remembering so you've shown up you've got all your rental package they've shown you how everything works you're good to go you've got all the rental gear on you've got your own replica or the rental replica the marshals have gone through how to operate it you've listened to your safety brief you've done all of your waivers that's all handed in and you're there and you're ready to go, you've had a chat with some of the guys there, don't be afraid to have a chat with other people there. I've never had any problems talking to anybody at the Earthsoft sites. Most people in this sport are really friendly, so you won't have any issues there. They love talking about the game. So that's worth doing and get to know some more friends. That's another thing, if you're going on your own and none of your friends fancy going, do go on your own. Don't let it put you off. My very first game, I went on my own, made friends, within the first day it was great and you will find the same i would hope any decent site that's how it should be everybody should be chilled and happy so we've got through all that got all your advice you're ready to go out for your first game and you're playing now that brings me on to what i was talking about with attitude 
if you're in game, it might be a bit scary about getting hit. Um, I won't lie to you, some hits can hurt. If you get hit in the knuckles or on the face, like we mentioned, or the neck, it can sting a bit. <laughs> if you're like me and you don't wear lots of padded clothing, um, it can sting a bit when you get hit, depending on what you get hit by as well and the replica that's shooting at you. But it, it's not too bad. Um, if you're worried about it, you know, wear baggy clothing. That'll take some of the sting away. But don't be scared of getting hit. Uh, you are going to take hits during the day. And if you don't, you might not enjoy yourself as much because you want to get stuck in, get a feel for the site, get moving around, push the objective if it's there. And just generally, you'll have a better time rather than hanging back and not wanting to get hit. And that's another thing with the majority of rental packages. If you've got a rental replica, the range on those replicas is not normally going to compete with some of the guys that are experienced there that may have upgraded replicas or higher end replicas. So it is important as a new player, if you're using rental gear, which is normally not got the range, to get closer in, to get stuck in. Uh, just purely from a point of view of having fun and get some epic moments. <laughs> and along with that, the biggest thing for me is don't get too worried about winning or losing. Airsoft is an honor-based game. Now, biggest thing is, is to take your hits. If you think you've been hit, just take it. What does it matter, guys? You respawn, it's not life and death. So if you think you've been hit, call your hit, Go back to the respawn and get stuck back in. Get used to calling hits. Any of you guys have watched my gameplay videos, you'll know that I get hit a lot because I include that with my videos. There's nothing wrong with taking a hit. It's all part of the game. Somebody once said in a YouTube video, and I strongly agree with it, I don't go to Earthsoft necessarily to shoot people. I go to Earthsoft to take hits <laughs> and to get shot at by my mates. And that's what makes it good fun, guys. So if you are new to it, and you think you've been hit, take your hit, call yourself out, you'll get maximum respect off of the players there if they can see that you are an honest player and you're taking your hits. You'll actually get more respect from Airsoft players if you're taking your hits than if you're always capturing the objective but other people on the other team are claiming that you aren't calling your hits. We all work on honesty in this game. And that's why when you're playing, I have the attitude, I don't care if I win or lose, as long as everybody's having a good time, and as long as I'm having a good time. There's nothing worse than interrupts the flow of your day if everybody's arguing and calling each other and, and saying that people aren't taking the hits. Nobody's impressed. None of us, well, as far as most of us are concerned, we aren't special forces. We, you know, it, it's not life or death. It's a game, and it's all part of the fun is getting hit, and getting hits on other people. So take your hits, make sure you're honest with your hit taking, that's a big part of it. And don't get too carried away with who's winning or losing. If you play the game to your best, I mean obviously don't purposely try to lose, but if you play your game to your best ability and you win, great, awesome. As long as everybody are having fun, everybody's been calling the hits, that's good stuff. If you lose, but you've had a great time doing it, again, there's no losers in Airsoft. As long as you're having fun, that is the biggest attitude to take with you that I could advise for Airsoft. If you're obsessed with winning and you're not winning and you're new to it, you're not gonna have a good time. But if you're just there to have some fun, live out some of the action from your favorite action movies or play Call of Duty or your favorite computer games in the woods <laughs> and do it semi for real with replicas and something solid in your hand, instead of a controller and getting out of breath running around, great, that's the attitude to go with. You'll have a great time, it'll be great fun. Make some new friends, like I said, and it's all good fun. And that's, that's all part of it. One other thing that I should mention as well to expect is what we call chrono. Now, if you've never encountered that before, uh, basically, this is my chrono here. It's not something you need to own yourself, um, unless you get into working on your own replicas. But as a new player, when you get up to out of the safe zone, into the game zone, you may have to chrono your replica, whether it's a rental replica or whether you've taken your own. You will normally have to chrono it 
And the reason for that is, is for site limits. Different sites have different site limits. Here in the UK, the average, I believe, is 350 feet per second on a 0.2 gram BB uh, out of something like this and about 500 feet per second out of a sniper or bolt action. Varies from site to site. Some sites will measure in joules. Some sites will measure in feet per second. If you are elsewhere in the world, I believe that in the States and some of the game sites in Europe, you guys operate much higher uh, joule limits and feet per second limits. So you can shoot a lot hotter uh, than we can. But the majority of sites will stick to those kind of regs. And unfortunately, if you do buy your own replica, or if the rental you're issued with is shooting over the site limits, they won't let you shoot on that day. Normally what they'll do is they'll identify that your replica has been chronoed. You can see I've got a tie wrap there. That's what uh, happens at my home site. They'll have a different color for each game day. And whatever color it is that day, they'll put a tie wrap somewhere on your replica to show that you've been chronoed. Don't be shocked either if the marshals come around doing spot check chronos as well, just to avoid anybody altering their BB weights or things like that to try and get around chrono. And again, that all goes down to attitude. Like I was saying, if you become obsessed with winning, with being the best, you find that in those cases, some people might be willing to bend the rules. Now to me, that's just causing pain needlessly to people for one, because you, you're purposely trying to make your replica hit harder. There's no point to that. You might as well use better skill or, or better teching on your replica to get it to shoot the distances you want, rather than upping it to sometimes dangerous limits. That's, that's not the way to play Airsoft. So stick to the rules of sight limits. Make sure you abide by the chrono rules. Big thing as well. If you do encounter somebody who you think shooting hot, report it to a marshal. If you encounter somebody that you think isn't taking the hits, rather than argue it on the field, take it to a marshal. Your nearest marshal will obviously look to enforce site rules. So have a chat with them. And then it doesn't interrupt your day. You don't get any aggro and you have more fun on the day. So with all that in mind, guys, the, the big thing I can take away from this is is to enjoy yourself. Go there for the fun of it. Get to know some new people. Don't take it too seriously when you're new at it. Some of you experienced guys. Remember that when you first started, it was all about having fun. It's not all about winning. And, you know, if winning means breaking the rules, then, you know, I'd have less respect for a player who breaks the rules than I would for someone who's constantly winning the game for us. Biggest thing to me is someone with a big smile on their face at the end of the day. That's what matters to me in Airsoft, guys. So like I say, I've covered a few little bits there for if you're a new player and what to expect. You'll be out on the field, running around, shooting. Got your marshals there to help you. You've done all your waivers, everything like that. So if you guys have any other questions about Airsoft games in general, or about you know how it is when you turn up, drop me a comment below. If you guys have any other comments for new players on, on what to expect on the, the early days in Airsoft, then by all means, put a comment below and help them guys out. Help me out if I've missed anything out. <laughs> Hopefully I haven't missed anything out. But the big thing is, guys, just remember, it's a great sport and hobby. It's more fun than anything I've ever done before. Like I say, you get to run around the woods with a replica firearm. <laughs> Shooting your mates. It doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> so the big thing is, guys, enjoy yourselves. Listen to your marshals. Listen to your site owners. Do a little bit of reading if you want on the communities. Most of the communities will be happy to help. Don't get too bogged down in some of the more competitive side of it. If you want to get into the competitive side and everybody's on that wavelength, then that's fair enough. But if you're a skirmisher like me, then basically you're going for the fun of it and the enjoyment of it and to have a good day. So if you win, bonus. If you lose, as long as you've had a good day, who really cares? <laughs> so there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've got something to take away from it. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have any comments about anything we discussed today, drop me a comment below. I'll always get back to you. 
And if you've been enjoying my series of videos, guys, then do forget, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel. That way you won't miss any of my uploads. And if you want any more content from myself, you can find Rock Bottom Airsoft on Facebook and Instagram. Pictures, things like that on there, following a bit of the stuff I've been doing. But apart from that, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.